understand it, so we're just reviewing. Uh, but what happens is the non-sister chromatids that are right next to each other, like my pointer fingers, not my middle fingers. Okay, here's a duplicated chromosome. Here's a duplicated chromosome. They're homologous. There's my tetrad. These two, the non-sister chromatids from your homologous pair, they tend to get tangled up. Not these two, but the ones that are closest to each other they tend to get tangled up. And then as anaphase pulls them apart, they tend to swap pieces, as you see here. Right? This chromatid is no longer identical to this chromatid, is it? So even though these are called sister chromatids, these are non-identical. As you can see, a little bit of the red chromosome from over here ended up on the blue, and vice versa. Graham. Is it possible for like crossing over not to occur? In yes. This does not always occur. What would happen if that happened? Well, if that happens, then you you'd get all. This would be an all blue one, and this would be an all red one. Yeah, let's just say that, let's say that up here, this tip right here has, has uh, uh, a gene, and there's usually two or three different forms of genes. Let's say, uh, well, the gene for big muscles and the gene for small muscles. I'm making something up. Let's say the blue chromosome here has the gene for big muscles, and this one has the gene for little muscles. All right? Now... What gene does this have? A That's the little muscle one. What, what, what's the gene here? Big muscle. See how that works? So you have actually created a brand new chromosome there. And if it doesn't, it just stays. If it doesn't, it stays the same. That's variety, isn't it? If it wasn't for crossing over, you'd only have two different gametes, right, as far as the chromosome goes. But now, look at you've created a brand new chromosome that's probably never, ever existed before in the history of humankind. All right? This chromosome right here is called a recombinant chromosome. Recombined chromosome. Yeah. We'll just follow along here then. Okay? So that's the idea. Not too complicated, I don't think. All right, we just duplicated our chromosomes, right? So they're still homologous, but they're duplicated now. Now we're doing synapsis. All right? So we're in prophase one of meiosis. And every now and then, the chromatids that are right next to each other from the homologous chromosomes they end up getting tangled. By the way, these letters represent alleles, which is what we're going to use when we start doing genetics problems. All right? Maybe the big F is. I don't know, for blue eyes, a little less for green eyes, the big H for, I don't know, attached ear lobes, and little H for unattached ear lobes, whatever the trait might be. We're going to go ahead and watch what happens sometimes. Sometimes they get tangled and swap. They recombine, don't they? Now you've got, instead of just two different chromosomes, you've got four when all is said and done, don't you? There's meiosis one, and here comes meiosis two. These are haploid cells because you, you separated the tetrads. And now here comes meiosis two. No, they're not going to show you. Here's, something, here's what uh, Graham was asking. Sometimes it doesn't happen, but every once in a while it does. Now here comes meiosis too. Is crossing over common or not? It's pretty common. 
All right, now let's take a look when they're all said and done at our four gametes. Let's take a look here. With no crossovers, you've got two different types of chromosomes, don't you? You've got the chromosome with the big F, the big H. It's the exact same. Then you have a chromosome with little f, little h. There's only two possibilities. All right, let's say crossing over took place. Well, look at this. You've got a chromosome with big F, big H. You've got one with big F, little h. That doesn't exist over here, does it? You also have one with little f, big H, and little f, little h. So you've actually got two brand new chromosomes that result from crossing over. So that bumps variety up big time, doesn't it? See, Senora. Are we going to do like Punnett squares? Too? Yes. <laughs> Questions here. <laughs> Crossing over. It creates new chromosomes. So maybe you can, uh, if you pass on your dad's chromosome, all your dad had was green eyes and attached earlobes to give you. But if he swaps a little bit with your mom's, maybe mom had blue eyes and unattached ear, maybe you got a green with unattached connected now on a chromosome. So now you can pass that on. Exactly, it mixes it. Let's say that your dad has green eyes and attached earlobes. All right? If he passes a, a chromosome on to you, and it, well, there's no crossover, you'd have green eyes and attached earlobes. All right? A minute. Okay? Let's say your mom has blue eyes and unattached. If you got her chromosome, you'd have blue eyes and unattached, right? What if they crossed over? Well, then you could have a green eyes and unattached passed on to you now. See, so there's a new combination of traits that could get passed on to you because of how the chromosome was created. Is there anything that was like whether you get that trait from your mom or your dad, or is it just random? It's random. Totally random. Totally random. That's, that's the thing. It's really random. Good question. All right. Any other questions there about crossing over and how it creates brand new combinations of genes that can get passed on? Right. Um, here's what it looks like. First you duplicate your chromosomes, then you form a tetrad, and then sometimes crossing over takes place. And you actually create brand new recombinant chromosomes. Duplicate, crossover. So that's crossing over. Again, that's what it looks like. Just show the, uh, the close non-sisters getting tangled up and swapping pieces. And again, it happens during prophase one. So here you got recombinant chromosome. Here's another recombinant chromosome. These are not, are they? They're just normal. But these, you've got genes combined that weren't previously combined together. Okay, now comes the independent assortment, which always seems to elude some kids. Uh, that's why I ask you to do questions two and questions four and actually draw it out. Hopefully you understand it better after you draw it out. Um, real simple though, in theory, to understand. It uh, simply means that during metaphase one, when your tetrads line up, they can line up any way they want to line up. Okay? Let's take a look at two possibilities. I've got a cell, and what's my diploid number here? Four. Right? Two sets of chromosomes, there's four of them, the diploid number is four. All right? And let's say that I've got, I'm going to do meiosis at 2 o'clock and I'm going to do meiosis at 8 o'clock. At 2 o'clock, this is what my cell looks like 
during metaphase.